Hello everybody, welcome to the ITL. We're down in my basement. This is actually going to be a little bit of a change up for us. I'm going to show you how to change, uh, what is it called? It's the uh, draft blower motor, I believe. Um, don't have the thing on here. But it's actually for, this is actually for a high, fish, for a high efficiency furnace. Mine's actually considered a 90, 90 percenter. Um, well, as you can hear, the furnace is on. There's a little bit extra noise there from the draft from the draft motor on this thing. And let's actually show you guys. I actually do do something. <laughs> but I'm just sitting here waiting. I figure waiting for the furnace to shut down. That way it'll, it'll cycle fully, and then we'll tear into it, and I'll show you what is involved. I mean, it's it's not that hard. It might be a little bit time consuming, but it's not that hard. And tools that you'll be needing is right. Hold on, sorry about the lighting. It actually looks better. You'll need a screwdriver, a Phillips head. A Phillips. <laughs> actually, this one has a Phillips head because it's a multi tool. But basically, all you'll need is a straight screwdriver. This is just a cheap one from Harbor Freight. It's multi, I mean, multi screwdriver, you know what it is. But, um,. But yeah, it's this is basically all you need. The Phillips part of it will be to take the outside screws off. And yeah, hold on one second, I will flip you over to see my furnace. Yeah, it's a furnace. You see it's a tapping. This is not even though it says tapping on here, this is not really made by tapping. I can't remember the company. Actually, I can read it right off the blower motor itself. Hold on. Oh, No, that's not the, even the right one. This is not made by Tappan, actually. It's made by another company. I really can't remember the name of such an end, I believe. But, I'm just showing you this because, I mean, we've got the Phillips head screwdrivers, but we're not going to be dealing with these ones. We'll be dealing with the ones up here. Take these two out whenever it's done. Take the front pan, this top panel off. You really don't have to mess with the bottom panel because that's for the, the fresh air motor. And actually, you can hear that the the draft motor is shutting down. Oh, that's, that's the part we'd be changing. But in this, I will. Sh we'll, what I'll do is I'll remove these. As soon as this heater shuts down, all the way, we'll remove these two screws and pull the panel off, and then, then I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, here we are. Don't forget to shut your power off to the heat furnace whenever before you take start taking it apart. My power switch just happens to be up there. It's flipped off, and don't forget to shut your gas off. Also, just for good, good safe measures, I'll use my flashlight here. And you can see right over there is actually the information <laughs> decal, which is very hard for me to see on a lot of parts of it uh, because it, I mean, it just goes down through and be buried. The easiest way I found to read those whenever it's buried like that is just to use a simple cell phone with the camera. That way you just sneak it in there, snap a picture, bring it out, and you pull it out and you can pretty much see it. Um, but that's how I got, ended up getting the model on this thing. And I will show you the model in here in a little bit. But that right there, this motor right here, that's oh, it's not too bad. This is what I'm changing. This is what went bad in it. I got it going again. By I mean, you got what it was was it, right in that ductwork right in there. Come, you see that pipe right here, down through here. It actually got debris and made this fan st stick. So what we're going to do is we got to go through and do all the unplugging here, there, and these are actually you see these two wires right here. The orange, they're orange, both orange ones. They go to this one switch right down there. And they're the same color and everything, so it's like, oh, those are the ones that got me in trouble before. So, I mean, the best thing to do is to fit, make sure you got them in the right spots. What I'm going to do is the back, the, actually the front one, I'm going to kind of knot, kind of like a, like a little bow in the, uh, in the wire. That'll tell me that it's, it's, for that, it's for the right side. But to make it easier, I'm going to go ahead and pull the firebox part, the cover off. Just take these screws off, 
pull that off. You can take the burner loose and it just kind of goes to the side a little bit. But you got to go through and remove all your little screw, all your little connections and everything. Just get them out of the road. These lines, rubber lines, got to be removed out of the road. Those ones, it's not hard to really make sure. I make sure the back goes back to the, um, the blower unit itself right there. And the front one, it just hooks right into the to everything else. So it's not, it's not hard to figure out. But I'm going to go ahead and tear into this, get this part, and we'll get back to it whenever I have all this out. All of that out. Okay, everybody. As you can see, i got everything removed. Pretty much out of there. Um, right up here, right, right where you see, that's actually the vent tube, uh, exhaust pipe whatever you want to call it, uh, it comes down and just loosen, just loosen up that cl bottom clamp right there so you can get this uh, unit removed, uh, loosened up but you're going to have four, no three little fasteners, one back in here, I'll show it with my foot there, there's, there's one on the lower side there in that area and there's one over on here on this side which I can't really show you, but they're covered. As you can see, I got the uh, burner unit removed, half of it. It's kind of hanging there. It's not what I really like to do, but it is what it is. Um, while you're in here, it doesn't hurt to go in there. There's, that's actually an eye sensor right in that area there. It'd be good to clean, just to clean that off a little bit. Just take a look, like a, like a clean cloth and just wipe that loose down. That way you got it apart. It's, you don't have to come back in later on because it's failed to sense it. Um, you do have a ground one ground wire. You see that, that uh, screw right there. That's where the ground wire from the motor hooks into. The rest of it are just little plugs that you just connect. I've got this one completely undone right here. So it's ready to actually come out after I get these, these uh, three screws out. Now you just look at that right there. That is what, uh, the switch that I replaced. Because it just crumbled away and fell apart on me whenever I went, came to work on this, get this running. Now this mo motor does work. It just it's been overheated once. It's a little loud, right? It's got a little bit of a noise to it right now that it really shouldn't have. Because um, all it is lube it up, oil it up. It's so I'm replacing it because it's not if it's going to fail. It's just when it's going to fail. And I and you got it's best to disconnect your your water drain hose just to get them out of the road a little bit just give you as much room as you can to get this thing out as you can see it's kind of shoehorned in there a little bit but I'll get that out and we will come back okay as you can see here I got it all I got it out you look in here okay around that hole vent that hole right there really I need to get there get in there and clean that up really good I'll also clean the bottom of this up clean this mess up uh, do have a little bit of uh, water coming out of the line there, but that's okay. That's not going to hurt anything because it's, I mean, eventually you just have it all hooked up and it'll just drain on down anyway. But saying that, um, basically, if I understand what this does is that it takes from the heater box and everything takes this takes the moisture off of it and sucks up and puts it out and it just throws out you throws it out your exhaust. So I mean. It's doing a good. It'll. It, you don't have to worry too too much about carbon monoxide a whole lot for this, but it's good to take it, just to clean everything up and be good about it. Now my version, I brought up about the, the little uh, ID tag. It's on here. There's a reason for that, and I'll show you here in a minute. Okay, well, in with the motor. Blow a new new uh, motor. You have this bag, and it comes with. Two spacers. Uh, actually, there's a little like a foam sealer seals in here, and an information sheet. And I'll get that information sheet out for us. Go look at it. On this information sheet, you can see there's there's a bunch of uh, what's it diagrams you can call. It. But you look down here, this will be the, your model number of your your furnace. This actually corresponds to the spacers right there. 
and mine just happens to be a um, L1RC, which we'll see right there. L1RC and it's 120. And it says it doesn't take require any spacers because there's the spacers right there. That's that's, that's your input there right here and this is what your spacers require. So mine doesn't require any spacers. And I mean it just, just goes on and on. I mean your furnace might be a little bit different, your different make model, but this is basically I'm just showing you to get you an idea of what this, comp this, this takes to do it. So basically what we'll do is actually I haven't cleaned that up yet. We'll be cleaning that up here real shortly. But you got this and you really probably can't see it on camera too too much. Let's see. Yeah, you can see this little like indentations actually that, that pops out, and you take you pop it out, and that actually goes around. Here's the new motor. It goes around the hole there, and that's that's for sealing. That's for sealing. So that's why I gotta clean that hole up. You can't really see it right down in there. So I'll go ahead and get that put back in the get that in place. And I'll show you the close up. Okay, I got the fasteners put all put in and tightened down. Now look at that. See that I pointed out that switch before? That is actually not the one I pointed out. That's actually the one that came up because you buy the unit, that little switch comes into place. So I have a <laughs> I have a new one that I can just put back. I want to put that actually I want to put that whole old blower unit back because it still works. It might get me through a cold a couple cold nights if I have to. If something if this fails. But you look down here. Look down here. That's where that switch goes that has that two orange wires. You have to remove that off of your uh, old uh, unit and stick it and replace it back on there. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, to be honest with you, a nut driver would work a lot, a lot better than just a straight screwdriver on these. Make these a little faster. Maybe even a uh, one of those power screwdrivers would even make it even nicer. Instead of struggling with... Uh, with what I'm doing. Okay, since last time you've seen it, I put the burner unit back up into place. Uh, I hooked up the ground line that was down there. I uh, started hooking up the hoses too. Got that back clamp all tightened up. It's 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 basically almost ready. I mean, it's almost it's it's so close to being done. It's unreal, guys. Um. Basically, just make sure you get all, get all your connections together. Uh, I've already marked my orange wire, so I know where they go. I got some blue wires that are marked because they go up to the underneath, underneath there, underneath. We'll see, underneath that area there, to this different sensors. I got those marked. Um, just go through, take your time, and mark them. Just my flashlight. Ah, luckily, it's not gold style; it's LED. So it'll take a beating. Um, but yeah, this is this is not hard work. This is like I said, your furnace might be a little bit different, but it should not be too too far off from doing a, doing this type of job. Okay, it's all installed. You can hear it running. That sounds a little better. Remember, you gotta turn your gas and your electric back on to it to get it kicked over. Um, I just made sure everything was all buttoned up inside, wired in like it's supposed to be. This uh, cover here for your, uh, oh, your, you can see the fire starting through the little window. Um, it's actually the glow plug, the little igniter. Um, if you notice, well, in the beginning I put this on backwards, upside down. It really didn't make too much of a difference, but I put it upside down whenever I worked on this last time. There's actually a little cutout in the bottom here goes around the pipe. But if you look down there, there is LEDs and actually the red one and they actually will spew out will spew out error messages, which you can find out what they mean by looking at your your door here. And I can't well it'd be like right there. There's the error mess error codes. To help you diagnose it. And this is actually has the wiring diagram for the furnace and everything else. It's running, it's running better. 
gonna go ahead and button things up. But I'll tell you what. <laughs> I hate it whenever there's nice, nice flame in there. Um, I hate it whenever you got extra parts that uh, would never get done that weren't what you're changing. That screw I found laying down in the bottom corner here. It was just laying there. What the heck? But I mean, oh, that's that's the screw that actually holds the pan outside panels on. So I have an extra one. Um, I'll find a home for it. I'll probably put it in a box. So I'm gonna keep the old one back. I'm gonna go ahead and close this up and uh, come right back to you. Oh, here, back in the light here. Okay, everybody. I've showed you it's rotting in here, right here. Um, it's quiet. Um, this is not really a how-to video. This is kind of, yeah, you're following it kind of step-by-step step in a way with me doing this. Um, but it's basically, this video is actually to show you that I mean I am not a furnace repairman I am I, I work on my own furnace I've worked on older furnaces in the past I am a homeowner that likes to save money do it safely because even though there's lots of things in here that could go wrong don't let that scare you though ask questions use your head Take your time. If you run into a, a get stumped, ask more questions. I mean, there's always somebody online or somewhere that could will, will answer you. I mean, if, and I think and pretty much anybody with, I mean, that's physically able to, can do something like this. I figured I'd give you the kind of a show and tell here a little bit and kind of a pep that yes, this can be done. That blower, uh, that uh, vent blower motor, for me, for this furnace, was right around $130. Uh, yours might be a little bit more expensive, might be a little bit cheaper. Actually, I did, uh, there was one that was cheaper for a different or for a lower model. But for the key thing is, if your furnace goes down, if you need to look for parts, look on that uh, tag to the long side of my, like I showed you on mine. Yours could be anywhere on your, it's normally in the, the mechanical apartment department somewhere on the sides um, get the uh, your bottle number that's what you're going to need for your all your parts I got that one actually off of uh, Amazon yeah Amazon doesn't sponsor me I buy enough off of them though I got that off Amazon my furnace is back up and running ready for a lot lot more I mean, it's 11 years old probably go for another 11 more years without with very little trouble it's just Basic maintenance, changing the air, air filter, and whatnot, and be kind of trouble free. But this is Buzzle Bike. Hoping you all have a great week. Signing out.